Are you having a lot of histamine symptoms? Maybe you have itchy, dry skin, post-nasal trip, ongoing cough, acid reflux. Lots of histamine symptoms can mask different things. And so in this video, we're going to look at the difference between mast cell activation syndrome versus histamine intolerance. We'll look at the similarities and differences in some of the things you can do about histamine intolerance and high histamine in general. My name is Dr. Tara Nella, and if you're new to this channel, I just want you to know that I make these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health, whether it's a confusing lab test, symptom, diagnosis, or just trying to optimize your health. I make these videos to help you get a better understanding of what's going on. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, hormones, health optimization, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaim, the information contained in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as treatment for any medical condition or a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deepen your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's look at mast cell activation syndrome versus histamine intolerance. So in this video, we're going to look at mast cell activation syndrome versus histamine intolerance. Mast cell activation syndrome isn't the same as histamine intolerance, but they are often confused or used together. Both are definitely a problem with too much histamine, and because of this, it can present with similar symptoms and often can be used interchangeably because of those symptoms. So mast cell activation syndrome is a complex and often underdiagnosed condition characterized by abnormal release of mast cell mediators, including things like histamine, and it leads to a wide range of ongoing and varying severity of symptoms, which can affect different parts of the body, ranging from digestive to lung to skin. With mast cell activation syndrome, mast cells are overactive and hypersensitive to various triggers and once triggered, they release inflammatory and immune mediators. And in people with mast cell activation syndrome compared to normal people, they have a lot more triggers. And when they do have a trigger, the response is more intense than would typically be expected. On the other hand, histamine intolerance is a condition characterized by an inability or poor ability to metabolize or break down histamine. This can lead to an accumulation or excess of histamine in the body. And there's a few different ways that those enzymes in the body or the breakdown occurs. So the enzyme in the digestive tract most commonly associated with histamine intolerance is called diamine oxidase or DAO. When you don't make enough of that DAO or diamine oxidase, it is typically more of a genetic or inborn issue. The main job of that diamine oxidase is to break down the histamine that's already contained within the food. And it can be taken as a supplement when you have the genetics for low DAO production. And sometimes people take it just empirically because they think they might have this genetic alteration. The other major enzyme that breaks down histamine in our bodies is HNMT, also known as histamine and methyl transferase. This enzyme requires a methylation and CME specifically in order for it to work properly. Of course, HNMT, just like DAO, is under genetic controls, and some people don't have well functioning HNMT enzymes. And of course, there are methylation SNPs and problems that can be a problem as well, leading to not enough SAME, which is the main cofactor for HNMT. So there's lots of reasons, and these are just a few of the more common reasons why someone might have histamine intolerance, meaning inability or poor ability to break down that histamine once it gets released or once it's in the body from foods. In simple cases of too much histamine or poor breakdown, adding some support to these enzymes or decreasing the amount of histamine coming into the body can be very helpful. The simple cases, though, usually resolve on their own anyways, and you don't really end up having a lot of issues ongoing. So it's important if you do have symptoms of high histamine to differentiate between mast cell activation syndrome and histamine intolerance and also mast cell activation 
without it being an actual syndrome, just a local mast cell activation. It's also important to note that sometimes taking support for histamine breakdown and elimination can actually make things worse before it gets better. So if you're super sensitive, you should be very cautious about what you take and how you take it. But looking at the overall histamine levels in the foods you're eating and reducing that is generally going to be a safe bet for anyone that's struggling with high histamine symptoms. So I'll put a link to the DAO supplement that I think is a good option. If you guys want to check that out, it'll be in the description. All right, so how they do, did that help you better understand mast cell activation syndrome versus histamine intolerance? Hopefully it does. If you have follow-up questions on that, drop it in the comment section. I'm happy to answer your questions. We'll see you next time.